Alright. Alright, that's awesome. Wait. Staging it behind there's the scenes. There's four cameras on me. That's one, that's two, and then... Focus uh, on my ball spot. Good. Yep, let's go. Focus. Cool. You recording? Yep. My question to you, I want to ask you about any odd jobs you had, or any uh, nine to five jobs you had before, oh, yeah. before you went famous. Oh my god, I've shifted boxes in a warehouse, I worked in a market, uh, you know, getting up the crack of dorm and fingers were freezing cold, putting the stall up. I, uh, I worked in restaurants, the barman. I was an entertainer. The hardest thing I've ever done is I was an entertainer at children's parties. That is humiliating, let me tell you. <laughs> Particularly if you're working for actors and people who are your age or younger and, and make a ton of money. Um, I, I, nothing is beneath my dignity. I think, you know, work is, work is dignified and just get out of your house and do something. When did you start creating a vision for yourself, like maybe outside of that? I mean, I, I used to work at Wendy's and the manager came up to me one day and she was like, Dante, you're going to be a manager here one day. I never went back. Right. I had another vision for myself. You know, I'm not shitting on Wendy's. You know, you know I'm, I'm noble to have a job. I was just, right. I knew that wasn't for me. I knew I had a bigger vision for myself. For you, like, when did you have a, you know, that you had a bigger vision for yourself? Well, so I, I went to college to study law originally, and uh, and I was doing it, and I thought I should do everything as a hobby while you're at college. Do it, take advantage of anything. Always, always say yes. Regret the things you've done, not the things you have. Never say no. So I said yes to everything, and I tried to. You know, do anything I could, and one of the things I thought that students did, my cliche though, is they did a play. Hmm. I also thought they read philosophy books and they, you know, they drank French wine. So I don't know. I tried to do a bunch of shit, and um, so I did a play, and I suddenly found I was in a room, and I felt for the very first time in my life like it didn't matter where I came from, and I wasn't self-conscious about anything. I wasn't always thinking other people had the key. Other people had been to that class where life was explained that I'd missed, you know, and. Uh, so I did play after play after play, I just followed my passion. And, um, and I, just for a second, I began to think, you know, there are some people that do this for a living. And I applied for drama schools, and I made what I thought was a tough decision, which is I wasn't going to do a sensible job, and I probably was going to be poor, but I was going to be happy and fulfilled. I never thought I would survive. I never thought about ha you know, anything to do with finance. I thought, if I could do this all my life, if there was food in the fridge, I'd be happy. It so happens I've ended up making a good living, but mostly what I did is I followed my gut and I followed my passion. I followed the one thing I did where I felt like I was myself. That was just really good. One last thing. Um, you know, art really inspired me. My uncle, he died at 39, and art was a big part of his life. And I felt like if he would have believed in himself, um, he maybe he would have had him for longer. You know, he would never say he was an artist, mm -hmm. but he can draw the Hulk with his eyes closed. Um, you know, so for me, how, my question to you is, how do you feel about the influence that, that art has on people? I think it's, well, I don't know if you have time for a long answer, but yeah. did you have time for a long answer? Yeah, you absolutely, sure? go for it. So I used to go and help, uh, help out at this school in South Central, in Los Angeles, when I lived there. Uh, it's an outreach program, and it's a blighted neighborhood. I mean, there's nobody, there's, no one's got any dads. So most of the teenage girls are pregnant, and, you know, uh, crime and drugs have just laid waste to the community and there was this one class, this film class that still existed even though the school had no art, drama, music, phys ed, band, had nothing at this school and uh, there was this young girl one day I went in to help uh, I shouldn't say her name anyway, I, I said what do you want to do? She goes I want to do a little film where my older self gives me advice and I said okay let's tell me what, what let's pick two or three things in your life so you could give, you, give yourself advice about where are you having trouble in your life? What are the difficult areas? And she said, well, I've been raped since I was a baby, me and my sister. And uh, then my dad's gone to prison for life because the immigration people found him. And uh, then my mum's gone to prison because she protected him and she kind of rejected me and she said I was lying and they locked her up as well. So now I'm in foster care and, and my brother, my foster brother's beat me up all the time. I'm, I'm listening to this, like reeling and punch drunk. And uh, I said, okay, so what do you want to tell yourself? She said, well, it's not really for me. I want to do it with my sister. I said, why your sister? She goes, because she's really fallen down the well and she's just reacting badly and she's taking a lot of drugs and she just is not communicating with the world. And I said, why would you be okay? She said, because I have books and I have poetry and I know I'm going to get to college because I go to the library and I see my way out of here. And that's the single answer that's the most powerful thing I've ever heard in the world. Art gives people a vision of what's possible.